Hi Floss Tube, it's Lisa Smith, Kindred Stitcher. Today is August 2nd and this is video 54. I, um, I've been watching a lot of different floss tubers and sometimes I see people have 150 videos and I think that's like a lifetime from now. But um, if you're new to my channel, oops, try not to bump you. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I have had some new people come on board and tell me that they're new and they've had some questions. So I really appreciate you coming and visiting if you're new. And if you've been with me part or all the time since the beginning, I appreciate you. Thanks for hanging out with me. So what's been going on in two weeks? Well, let's see. I um, haven't really gone anywhere. I mean, it's this coronavirus thing. I just end up staying home some, but I, yesterday I went to Michael's and Hobby Lobby for the first time in forever. And I felt like it was sort of normal. Like maybe I had some normalcy back in my life, but I really don't do that very often. I do work from home and in the evenings I stitch most of the time. So this weekend, last weekend I went and got some berries. The berry stand was open and I live in Washington state. So the berries here are prolific. Um, Oregon is the same way, very prolific northern berries. So they're a lot, not as long of a growing season as like, or they don't produce as long as say a California berry, um, but they are so delicious. So I got Marion berries and Marion berries, I think they're a cross between a Logan berry and a blackberry maybe. You have to look it up online, but they're the biggest berry you could, you've ever seen. They're like the size of your thumb and they're juicy beyond juicy. They're super juicy and sweet. So I haven't been eating sugar. I haven't, when I say that, I mean, I haven't been eating sweets or pop or anything like that since the beginning of January. So I made a Marionberry pie with no sugar. It was really good. Uh, it tasted more like the berries. It didn't taste sweet. I mean, it tastes sweetness from the berries, but not the sweetness that we know from eating store-bought or even homemade items that have sugar added. It was delicious. It was really good. Um, not calorie free, but <laughs> it was sugar free. So it was good. And what else have I been doing? Um, today I went outside and worked in my yard. Last year I was on retreats a lot. And between that and workload from work, I didn't spend much time in my yard. And so this year I'm sort of paying for it. I worked in the front yard and did weeding, but that doesn't take, that's not too long. I'll do that every couple of weeks and it's not too bad, but the backyard has completely overgrown and the roadies that I have in the back are spindly. That's on the North side of the house. So I'm pulling out a lot of the bushes and weeds and I have a wisteria that runs over an arbor and it's like it's the trees from Jumanji. They just, they just root out, they suck her out, and then they take off. I had one that had a 15 foot sucker on it and I, I cut it and pulled it through a bunch of bushes. And so, um, but I just love that process of sort of cleaning the palette and thinking about what will I put out there? And I think I have a hydrangea that I planted a couple of years ago and I largely ignored it. I didn't know if I was gonna make it. The neighbor brought it for us. It is gorgeous this year. It's purples and pinks. Um, I'm not sure if there's any blues in it, but it's, I think I'll just line the whole north side of the house with hydrangeas because it doesn't get any direct sunlight. It's pretty temperate here and hydrangeas do very well. So uh, my husband and I have been sitting on the front porch in the evenings because the weather's been so nice. Uh, it's hot during the day, but it really cools down pretty well in the evening and we just enjoy each other's company and drink a glass of wine and plan our retirement home that we're going to build in a few years. Other than that, I've done some stitching and some floss tube watching, a little bit of designing and buying some stash because I have 500 bags I need to st make um, to sell. I just keep buying fabric to make project bags because it's easy to do. So let's just talk a little bit about the, the things that I have been working on. What I've, what I've decided to do, um, I had a lot of starts for Stitch Mania in May 
and I've been working on those and I have finished I think seven or eight of them of the 31 that I started but there are others that just need some time I but I think I want to I have two projects that I'm going back and forth between and I'm stitching on them weekly so on Sunday I wrap up and I get ready on Monday I start one of the projects and I set a goal for myself to stitch that week and if I stitch, if I finish that goal early on that project, I can do whatever I want the rest of the time. So I, this week was really easy. I, I worked on English Garden by Samplers Not Forgotten. Um, and this, I just adore this project and people love it on Instagram. They, they enjoy looking at the progress that I make on it. Uh, it's in my, Lori Textiles made this bag for me and my Bitsy Bob by Kelly Studola. The, um, the project is stitched on 40 count vintage tundra by Lakeside Linens. And the colors just pop on this piece. They're so pretty. So I finished all the way to the bottom. Here, let me do this. Well, I'll just hold on to it. Um, last I showed you, I was working that bottom band, but I finished the flowers and the side band all the way to the bottom. And on here, what I have left, I'm going to just do that here it is. What I have left is this, which is actually, there's a lot of blank areas. I'm going to go this side because this is easier. There is, um, this is really not stitch heavy on this side. This should go, that side should go fairly quickly. And I'm in the middle of this band right here. So I just need to do this and then the side. So it's really, um, I'm making a lot of progress when I stitch for a whole week on a project because I stitch in the evenings with no commute. I can just go in the house. My husband makes dinner. I clean up afterwards and that's a good deal, right? I really hate cooking dinner. It's like, I do it if I have to, but I don't love doing it and he doesn't mind. So, um, then I sit down and stitch and if I don't go anywhere the weekends, I just stitch some more. So there's where I am on that one because, oh, and this week my project um, goal was to stitch this bit, this piece right down here, these two flowers and this side band. Well, that was by Tuesday. I had that done. So I went over and pulled out a whip that I had started. I can't remember. I think it was after I finished the blue one, but it is a, Modern Folk Embroidery. I finished a blue Modern Folk Embroidery called Forget Me Not. And now this one is Frisian Cross Edge Sampler number one by Modern Folk Embroidery. Um, I want to thank you. There's a couple of viewers over the course of a couple of videos who told me that Frisian is an area, I want to say, of the Netherlands. I think so. Correct me if I'm wrong. And Frisian means happy. So what a great, I mean, happy sampler. Who does not want to stitch a happy sampler? And it's been a joy. So I've been stitching this on 40 count vintage fawn by Lakeside. And it is, and I'm stitching it with a silks for you. Oops, sorry, you guys. I'll do this in half because it's a fat half of fabric. I'm stitching this with a silks for you red. I don't know what number it is. I'll look it up and I'll put it in the show notes below. But, um, this is just, it's so pretty. There is a little bit of back stitching at the top, as you can see on those top motifs, but it's not a lot and it gives it such character. But I'll tell you all the letters, they all have all that back stitch because I think, I don't know. Most Danish samplers, I think they, they do have that on there. Anyway, so I stitched about, this is about a quarter of the chart. And it's symmetrical. So once I get to the midline and I do the middle motif, which is right here, the other side is this reverse image of this. It's a lot of fun to stitch. Easy stitching in the evenings. I don't have to think about it much. And then I worked to a certain point on that one and I thought, what else do I want to work on? So I pulled out one of my Stitch Mania starts and it is Summer at Cherry Hill by... Brenda Gervais. I worked on this just a little bit last night. I 
if it's an accused app because it's a 40 count. It's just easier to do that way. It's damn method. And I think I had last night I stitched from here over. This is on 40 count sand by Picture This Plus. And you can see the modeling right there. So those are the whips that I've worked on this week. Um, it's hard to choose when you have free time. Like, what do I want to work on? I want to work on everything. So oh, what I love about this methodology is that I'll stitch to a point and then sometimes you know how you can just stitch a little bit more and be done with an area, but I just leave it for the next time because when my, when I pick it up the next time, my mindset is like, oh, this is not going to be that hard to get this little bit done. Right. So sometimes I give myself more of a stretch goal, but sometimes, oh, here's the red floss to go with the, uh, oh, look at that. Sometimes it's a, um, it's an easy goal so that I know I can achieve it, especially if I'm starting to burn out a little bit on the, on the project, then I know that I'll, I'll build in some time from, um, stitching some other things. All right. This is what else I've worked on. G Ledger by Riflet. Riflet. Reflet de Soie. If you're French and you can say it, let me know. G Ledger, 1898. And this is stitched on 46 count vintage buttercream. I'm picking the threads as I go. It's matching the fat, the um, cover a little more than, um, much more than the threads that are charted. These are over dyed threads primarily. There's one uh, mystery silk in there and it's the, like the roof of the house. I'll see if I can find out what it is. I'll share the um, conversion when I'm, when I'm done stitching this, but look at the, look at the um, Eiffel tower with the little flag on it. Isn't that cute? And since the last time I saw you, what else have I done? I finished this pear apple thing at the bottom, the little sun, next to it with the cross. I, I was, my goal for this last week was to do both sides of the, uh, with the flowers and the vines, I'm sorry, the leaves and the vines, but this is really a little bit tedious. So I changed my plan halfway through and I was going to try to do this, both sides and the bottom. <clears throat> and instead I did the bottom, this side, part of this side, oh, and I was going to try and do this second roll of alphabets, but instead I did this down here. So next time, tomorrow, I'll start by finishing. There's a bird that goes in there. I can't remember. And then like another, a clock or something. And then I can go right into my alphabets and work on this vine back and forth so I don't, so that doesn't bore me to tears. And then really I've got a small alphabet at the top. And the top border and this will be done so if i can get this done and english garden done then i will send this to total framing because i'm going to show you why i got back from total framing and i thank you to brenda from brenda and the serial starter brenda really talked a lot about total framing and it made me feel comfortable sending um a couple things to them to frame i showed it on my instagram account but I would love to show y'all. So hold on one moment and I will pull the first one up. So the first one is Christmas garden. And can I tell you how much I love this one? The, they did just a fabulous job with the framing. It is, I asked for, so the process is you mail it. I called them. They were very generous with their time. They walked me through the process I told them in an email what I was looking for. I was looking for no glass, no mats, framed pretty close to the stitched piece. Um, with this one, I wanted a dark chocolate color that would match the dark chocolate that I put in the, in the stitched piece. And this is um, a conversion. There's only four colors in this pattern. You can still find it in the Home for the Holidays book by Blackbird Designs. This is called Christmas Garden. I used... Um, Gloriana silks. I used thistle green, yule gold. Oh gosh, what was the red called? Something cherry. And I think it's an espresso color. I'll put them down below. I don't remember. 
once you finish things, it's like it goes out of my head. It falls out of my head. And it's just on a silk weaver fabric that I bought when I was at the class two retreat in 2017, I think. Here's the frame that I picked. I really like this frame. It's sort of got a little bit of a contour to it, you can see. But this is this is Christmas garden. The next one is the long dog sampler that I did for my husband and my, this is our, this is our anniversary wedding sampler. I said, this, this really, um, tells a story about us and our family. Um, this is the love of two hearts. I put the year we got married on here and my husband Todd his initial in mine. And it says the love of two hearts. The, the roots of a family began with the love of two hearts. The colors of the call for colors. The fabric is 40 count sampler gold by color and cotton. And then this is the, this is the frame that we picked. So this has a, this has a little bit of a brush color, a little bit of a brush to it. And it has a tiny little bit of red. It's hard to see in the, in the um, video. And what I like about this is that the, the frame is sort of a, it's black, but it's kind of a gray black. I took this into Michael's and we looked at 500 different th different um, moldings. We just really couldn't find one that would work with it. So Total Frame did a great job choosing it. So that's the love of two hearts. And I love them both. So now, whoop, now I'm to a place where I'm going to hang my framed pieces in my dining room and I'm going to have a sampler wall, which I've been waiting for forever. Um, I've been working on this for quite a while and I see a lot of people on Instagram at BusTube who have beautifully stitched pieces hanging in their house. And I have, I do have some, and I have some in my craft room, but I really wanted a sampler wall. So stay tuned. I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. It's never going to be done, but when it's hung up and I decided to put um, a shelf above the hutch in my, or the buffet in my dining room. And then I'm going to put seasonal samplers there so that I can switch that out and make it 4th of July or Christmas or whatever. All right. So let's just talk. I showed you my whips. I showed you my FOs. I don't have any new starts, but I do want to shout a few people out. I have watched some folks and I've been keeping, this is my, what I write on next to my stitching chair and I'm watching floss. You I'm like, Oh, look at I tape around and write this, write myself a note. So the first one is Celeste creates, um, you know, I didn't take notes of the stitcher. So I have, I can remember some more than others and, um, some have more than one video. So the second one is, uh, and the Celeste is one that I watched recently. What was it about hers? I just liked her stuff. Elizabeth Ann Can Stitch is another um, floss tuber who I started watching. Jen M. Bowman, I started watching her. And then um, Globe Trotting Stitcher. I want to say, so she lives in Washington. She goes to the Kitsap Stitching Group. And uh, she has some phenomenal pieces. I followed her on Instagram for a while now while she was stitching Sabrina by um, Mirabilia. And I stitched Sabrina last year for my niece. So Globe Trotting Stitcher, she's got some great, some great pieces. Uh, Janae Combs is another floss tuber I've watched. And I watched Mrs. Flossie. Isn't all the names great? You guys are so creative. Um, Tanya Stitching Diaries. I watched her. And then um, Angie Meyer, um, Bub My on Instagram is her handle. So I've been following her for a while on Instagram. Then the last person I watched is Col Colorado Cross Stitcher, and that's Sherry. So I'm going to tell you, Sherry was a model stitcher for Cricut Collection, and she is so interesting to listen to. And she has so many things to show. Um, but I, I really enjoyed watching her her um, channel and hope to see more. She put the schoolhouse uh, smalls that Brenda Gervais put out a few years ago that are stitched one over one on Mushroom Lagana. She stitched them all together in a row. And I'm like, that is what I'm doing. <laughs> I took a screenshot. I'm like, okay, I can do this. She did a nice job of um, 
adjusting and making it her own. And I think I want to do more of that in my stitching, just really changing things around. So check all of these stitchers out. Um, my floss tube cache of videos is overflowing. I think I'm finally in July now. And um, every once in a while, I like to go in and maybe add or change some people out for the bell notification. So I just see more of different stitchers. I have a list of people that were recommended on other stitchers videos that I have teed up for this next um, couple weeks. So stay tuned for more shout outs. So what did I buy? Nothing. No, I'm just kidding. Of course I bought stuff. That's why you come to see me, right? All right. Well, let me show you. I'll show you some things that I want to do. Um, I love E. Sabrosa or Sabrosa Designs. She is on Etsy. I have stitched a couple of her pieces and she puts them out regularly. So I feel like I need to go buy, like I need to go buy five or six at a time to catch up. But I'm going to show you a couple that I picked up. So this is Flower Sampler and the colors in this, there's only a handful of colors. It's not a big chart. It calls for Weeks Dye Works, Sand, Parchment, Cinnabar, Cocoa, Flatfish, and Confederate Gray. And it's stitched on, you know, like a Blackbird. What is the one that's done by R&R? &R? 18th century Blackbird, maybe? It's a pretty color. So there's this one, Flower Sampler. So this one really caught my eye. And I've had this one on my wish list for quite a while and I decided to go ahead and, and pick it up and I got the colors for it. This is Harriet Hunt sewing pouch but I love the aqua the aqua colors on here and I would finish this as a sewing pouch. She doesn't include her finishing instructions on this though. I don't believe let me see Let's see if I'm telling you the truth or not. Yeah, she doesn't. So you kind of have to make it up, which would not be hard to do on this. Here's the back. She put a little patch on the back, but it's really, you know, you're sewing it onto a square. Here she pieced the top of it and you're sewing a casing. And then, you know, if you want to line it, you just, it's not hard. It's not hard. It looks like it's hard, but it's not hard. So there's that one. Um, Stitcher's Garden. This one's cute. These are all PDFs. So that's why um, they look like I printed them off because I have. This is Stitcher's Garden. And isn't that cute with the scissors and the needles? Super cute. Easter Hair. I saw this one when she, was, when she first produced it. I thought, I'm going to have to get that one day. And it was my one day not long ago. I really like that one. And then Polly Brown. I thought I had this one, but when I looked at my at my um, my binder, I did not see this. So this is I really like this, and this might be a sooner rather than later piece for me. Love it. So what else? I can't remember. I think I may have shown you this one last time. This is on my really, really short list, Rachel Holmes by Heartstring Samplery. And I love the colors in that. And I love these big diamonds. And these are fun little um, animals in the top there. And I picked a couple of threads up for that. I think I have the rest of them in, a, in a, another kit. So that's on my sooner rather than later list. Then I met my mom and my sister at um, Acorns and Threads. I just have to restrain myself. You know how it is. But then when you see these things like Paulette puts this out, holy cow, I couldn't get this fast enough. And this is going to be my very next start. And I do start something and I picked up the, um, the velvet to make the tomato on the top and I can't wait. I love it. I also, she had some more of the, this is um, Lady Dot Creates. That color was shallot. I called it shallot, like Lady of Shallot. My sister's like, I'm pretty sure that's shallot. Okay, whatever, shallot. Then I picked up cucumber. Ooh, that's pretty, isn't it? 
and navy bean. Navy, navy, navy bean. That's what it's called. I'm looking at the little tag over there. I got a little bit of shallot on there. But these are great finishing fabrics. And then I have, um, Beth Twist has a few of the samplers that are monochromatic. This one is Peace Band Sampler. Oh, I've been smiling, dreaming about the world as one. And I believe that someday it's going to come. She has a mistletoe one and the funny Valentine one. And I think I have the mistletoe, but I don't think I have the funny Valentine. But I love, don't you love a red sampler or pink, reddish pink color? You can pick any color you want for this. But I love it. And then... I'm a bandwagon jumper on her. I picked up Liz Matthews, first day of Christmas. Yep. I can even see doing a small right here. Wouldn't it be cute as a small, like at a, if we were going to retreats and we were doing smalls exchanges, that would be cute. And I picked up some chicken fabric when I was at Hobby Lobby yesterday. Hobby Lobby start and my Hobby Lobby, they're starting to get some fabric. It was a little thin um, on the floor, but she said they were getting more shipments and people are just buying it like crazy. So can't have enough ticking fabric for finishing. And then I picked up um, this fabric for project bags to add to my big stash of project bags. And here's the interior fabric. Isn't that pretty? I could see lots of different zipper colors on this. Pinks, light pink, dark pink, green, red, white, all of it. And then I'm always looking for Blackbird Designs fabric because they are not, no longer making fabric and it's hard to find. So I, when I see it on the secondary market, I'll pick it up. And this is a, let's see, what line was this? Meadow. But isn't that? So my friend Lori Textile, she's, she's got a ton of Blackbird design quilt books that I'm just going to have to build my stash up and we're going to have to make some, she's making some Blackbird quilts. This is the lace that I used in the Blackbird strawberries that I made a couple of videos ago. I, I wasn't sure if it would be around because that book came out, Deck the Halls came out a couple of years ago but I found some at my, my Hobby Lobby. So look and see if they have any. I got the end of the card that they have. And this one actually, she gave me a discount because there's a tear part way through. But um, if you're looking for it, don't give up. It might be at your Hobby Lobby and it might not be there this time, but it might be there next time. So I would say, check it out. I'm not sure if, I think I had this last time, but I didn't show you all. This is a Samplings of Memories. Long May She Wave. Um, this is Priscilla's um, design. And she made it into, you know, jewelry. I call it project jewelry, cross stitch jewelry. It's cute with a little button and a star on it. And I think I'm going to have to pick up that pattern. And then I also, in the past, I've shown you guys these. These make great zipper pulls if you make project bags. And you can get use your 40% off coupon. But these are in the Christmas um, section in the back of the store. I have some of these again. Then the, two things, and I'm almost done. Clearance. Hobby Lobby clearance. This could be covered and with a stitched item. Right? Wouldn't it be too hard to do that? Really, it would look like this and put your stitch dime on it. Six dollars, I think I got it. In the clearance section. Then the last thing I want to say is um, I follow, I get the newsletter for, is it Mary Corbett? She is an embroidering goddess. She's incredible. And I think she sends a daily newsletter and a blog. Um, I am all into embroidered boxes and they call that when you create boxes, um, cartonage is the word. So this is a fantastic resource on how to build and make 
boxes of your choice in size and shape. And you can fabric cover them, you could paint them. Most of these are fabric covered and mount your, um, your stitch piece on the top of the side or however you want to do it. So I am, I'm super obsessed with this. There's so many things that can be done. And I mean, look at this. This is, I think they call it a, a cask. Are you dying? I mean, come on. That's amazing. So I'm just, you know, building up my hoard for retirement. So I'm never going to be, have a dull moment. My poor husband, he's going to have to find a hobby because I'm not going to be sitting around doing nothing. That's for sure. Um, quickly, I do have something I want to show you all because I have a couple giveaways, but I forgot to bring them. So hold on just a second. I'll get them. Okay, so I've been going through my stash and I'm starting to de-stash some things. Although you can see by the rate that I'm accumulating that it's a losing cause. But I have this this bot this particular book. This is Acorn Hollow Art to Heart. These are adorable projects. So if you like to sew, I have two of these books to give away. This is the acorn. What is this called? Acorn hollow. So if you would like acorn hollow, just say acorn, something with acorn in your comment. And then this one, I made this for my mom. This is a, um, like a sewing bag. It is adorable. It turned out amazing. And it's got little scissor fobs in the back. Y'all look at that. How cute are those? So if you would like this one, please put sewing bag. And then the last one is the ultimate Christmas book. This is a Joan Elliott. I don't know if this is hard to find or not. This is from 2000. When was it? 2014. I had six years old. So if you like Joan Elliott, you missed this one. But it has a ton of... It has stockings. It's got a ton of stuff in it, you guys. This is a great book. I'm just not going to stitch. I just have to get rid of some stuff eventually. So if you would like this one, please write Christmas. So Christmas, sewing bag, acorn. And what I'd like you to do is ask me a question. Sometimes I get questions and sometimes I don't. But if you would like one of these, one of these items, just ask me, what is the thing that you wanted to ask that you just haven't had a chance to? Ask me a question. And then you don't have to ask me a question and put this, just put this after the question that you have, you know, acorn Christmas sewing bag. And we'll give us away the next video. Other than that, I think that's it. Um, I'm so grateful for you all. I, I do have one request. I have a friend who's having a health issue. And if you're a praying person, if you could just send prayer out for that person, I would greatly appreciate it. Other than that, we'll probably see you in a couple of weeks and have a great uh, rest of your two, first two weeks of August. Take care.